right now. Let's go to public address announcer Dom Alagia. Knights of Rutgers. Let's meet the starting lineups for St. John's, coached by Luke Carnesecca. At the forwards, number 21, Walter Berry. And number 30, Willie Glass. At center, number 23, Bill Wennington. At the guards, number 20, Chris Mullen. And number 24, Mike Moses. Here are the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers, coached by Tom Young. At the forwards, number 44, Andra Bell. And number 54, Steve Perry. At center, number 34, Lloyd Moore. At the guards, number 10, John Battle. And number 12, Chris Remley. The officials, Hank Nichols, Lou Mosier, and Jerry Donahue. Scarlet Knights of Rutgers have beaten Ryder 77-73 and Princeton 54-41. Redmen of St. John's winners over Lafayette 93-47. And then two squeakers, Bucky. St. <laughs> Bonaventure 58-57. Fordham 47-46. And it prompted many of the Redmen fans to say, what's wrong with St. John's? Well, of course, the, uh, the adventures in Jamaica have uh, raised some eyebrows around the country. Not to be uh, that great great a mystery uh, when you're highly ranked that way and you're trying to blend all that talent sometimes it takes a little while and the slower tempo right now is driving st john's up a wall that's how they'll match up to start both teams going with big lineups only one small guard on the floor the rest big men there is no shot clock in this game and the irony of that is is that there is one in the atlantic 10 conference of which rutgers uh, represents and certainly the big east has one and st john's is their representative but contractually in this game there is no shot clock and tom young has let it be known that that may be a great advantage He's depleted with injury, and we may see a little tempo now for two reasons. One, he's not at full strength, and two, the Walsh tempo has definitely given St. John's problems. The officials for today's game all assigned by the Atlantic 10, Hank Nichols, Jerry Donaghy, and Lou Moser. Well, not off to a very good start. It wasn't a very exciting jump off. Rutgers with the basketball. John Battle averaging 23 points per game. He's their All-American candidate. This is Chris Remley. Andre Bell throws to Steve Perry, and Rutgers begins by working the perimeter. Rutgers without three players. Ed Zucker, a 6'7 sophomore. Arthroscopic surgery in his knee. Brian Ellerby, a 6'1 senior guard. Dislocated shoulder. And Eric Riggins, 6'8 sophomore. Academically ineligible. So three players who would have at least been in the first nine will not play today. Well, it, it seemed obvious against St. John's man for man in the first half court look that Rutgers is going to be very patient with the basketball. Mike Moses out of the back court. He's the point guard, a senior from Tolentine High School in New York City. Willie Glass. Wennington to Moses. Moses will take the jumper. And the rebound controlled by Chris Remley. Remley comes off an excellent 8 for 10 shooting performance against Princeton. It's still Rutgers ball. Both teams a little bit unsure of themselves here in the early going. Both teams starting in man for man and uh, Perry, a very fine defensive player for Rutgers. Steve Perry is trying to guard Mullen. Here's John Battle. That's his range. Two points. Very important if you're going to play a, a tempo game to get the lead. It's a lot easier to play even or a little bit ahead when you're putting it on ice. 
Battle was held to 14 points against St. John's last year, 11 in the second half, and by that point, St. John's had already blown Rutgers out. So it's so important the Scarlet Knights feel that Battle gets out of the gate quickly. What a move by Walter Berry, and we're tied at two. That's the kind of talent we've been hearing about. Maybe not patient, but oh, so talented. Foul was called as Battle penetrated. It's on the outside, and it's on Mike Moses. Walter Berry now leaving the finesse system of Lou Carnesecca. Good move. That's the kind of move that looks awfully good when it goes in and will give Lou Carnesecca a little bit of apoplexy because Wennington was screening away, didn't even know the ball went up. John Battle. Tom Young calls his range 25 to 35 feet. He can shoot. He appears to be the only one with a green light. Uh, on the half-court basis. Here's Steve Perry. Perhaps the best athlete in this starting lineup. Remley from long range. Wennington clears the rebound. Fast break to Mullen. Two on one. Drops it off. And it goes out of bounds. Mullen tried to shovel pass to Walter Berry, but the pass went astray. Some outlet pass by Bill Wennington that time. He threw a frozen rope down there. Hit Chris right on the run. A fly pattern any NFL quarterback would have been proud of. Chris Remley, Steve Perry, trying to get it inside to Lloyd Moore. Moore dumps it back to Perry, baseline jumper, he hits. 4-2 Rutgers. Nice party that guy was at last night. And Mike Moses to Chris Mullen. Changing defenses. Then the two squeakers to St. Bonaventure and to Fordham. Both of those teams changed defenses, kept mixing it up, slowing the tempo, keeping St. John's out of sync. The irony is that for many years, Luke Karnasek was a great half-court half -court team. His teams are always very difficult half-court and probably uh, forced to run. They really weren't looking to go with it. And it appears that this St. John's team wants much more to go and is uh, probably going to have to do that if they're going to bring all the talent to bear. Berry in the key, turns, blocked by Moore, picked off by Andre Bell, battle, races to the front court, spins, blocked by Walter Berry, Moses the other way, Moses lays it up, gets the basket and a foul on Chris Remley. That's a four point turnaround possibility, uh, uh, battle put on the brakes, made a little move here, thought, thought he was in good shape. But the great athletes even get you from behind. Walter Berry really trucking it, coming from the trail position, took it right out of the air. One shot. Mike Moses averaging a little over four points per ball game. Chance for a three-point play. Now we have a whistle. They'll still get another shot. Someone stepped in too early. It was Lloyd Moore. It's kind of hard to miss him. That 260, number 34 down there on the inside in white for Rutgers. He is enormous. He could set some double picks all by himself. So Moses makes the free throw, and St. John's leads 5-4. This rivalry began in 1974, so it's a contemporary rivalry, but since then they've met 13 times. Rutgers has won seven. St. John's has won six. The Redmen have won five of the last six. Perry, off to Chris Remley. Remley can play forward or guard. Playing guard because Brian Ellerby, the point guard, out with an injury. And John Battle, who's usually the shooter, Bucky, he's playing the point. I think he's much better at the two position. Yeah, Rutgers is really vulnerable to pressure. Remley here is playing the second guard. And uh, they're really, uh, without Ellerby, they uh, they could be in a little difficulty if St. John's decides to come after him. Just As we're talking about. Yeah, is, although he's a fine outside shooter, uh, he, he really isn't a guard. We may see that from the Red Men of St. John's. They may come down and try to force Tom Young into a two-guard front. Chris Mullen did a nice defensive job and forced the turnover. Those are the little things he does well. Wennington loses the ball. And we have a whistle inside. Foul on Rutgers. Tom Young is very upset with Jerry Donaghy. And we have a timeout, 16 minutes left in this fast-moving first half. 
St. John's leads Rutgers by a score of 5-4 at the Meadowlands Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey. General asks, are you buying yesterday's technology? Data General, computer systems so advanced, we win more major contracts than any other company. Data General. Got to be in San Francisco Monday, Dallas Tuesday. I need lots of cash. Not really. If you do your checking with Manufacturer's Hanover Trust, even when you leave New York, your MHT card gives you the potential to get cash from your New York checking account. Even in San Francisco? Sure and at over 4,500 Cirrus cash machines all around the country. Oh, what about Hawaii? Wait, I was just kidding! Manufacturers Hanover, we realize your potential. Post. Let's go, Rutgers! Let's go, Rutgers! 5-4, St. John's Let's leads Rutgers. 16 Rutgers! minutes left, first half of play. And don't forget the ECAC Holiday Festival for Madison Square Garden. A fine tournament this year. St. John's and Old Dominion in the first game, 7 o'clock, December 27th. The nightcap, NC State and Rutgers. And then the championship doubleheader begins at 12.30 p.m. on Saturday, December 29th. The ECAC Holiday Festival this year. Two top-ranked teams in St. John's and NC State. I think a lot of people are just assuming they're going to be in the finals. I think when Rutgers gets all of their personnel back, that they have a good possibility of upsetting NC State in Madison Square Garden. And Old Dominion is a fine basketball team. St. John's better not be looking ahead. Mullen makes his first shot, a steal for Moses. Three on two, fast break. Moses pulls up, fires. Now the rebound to Steve Perry. St. John seven, Rutgers four. Here's John Battle. On to Bell. Battle, fall away, got it. Four points for John Battle, the senior from McKinley High School in Washington, D.C. Mike Moses, number 24, very quick, turned his head that time. That's all John Battle needed to make the penetration behind him into the lane. He really gets up on that jump shot. Billy Glass, Chris Mullen. Mullen from 18, yes, sir. A machine. I I said in the uh, in the opening of the show how efficient he is. He just doesn't waste any motion. Economy of motion. And watch him without the ball. Barry with the steal. Mullen and Barry on a two-on-one. Look out, Walter. St. John's by five, 11-6. Quick explosion. Mullen a couple of jumpers. Mullen a feed to Barry, a slam dunk, and a five-point lead. This is a dimension that the St. John teams have not had over the years. They almost always methodically just wore you down. Mullen swipes the ball from battle. Wennington, fast break. Moses has glass on his right. Willie plays it in. St. John's running the fast break to perfection. And they lead by it. seven. Yes, sir. Good timeout. Tom Young's upset with officials, but he can't let that tempo get away from him. The Redmen of St. John's have opened up a seven-point lead. A couple of big fast-break baskets, and Mullen from downtown hits two. From the Meadowlands Arena, this is college basketball. You could choose Heineken solely because it's far and away Europe's favorite, and Europeans know their beer. Or you could choose Heineken because it's far and away America's number one imported beer. Americans know their beer, too. Or you could open it, and pour it, and choose it for the best of all possible reasons. Heineken is the best beer in the world. Come to think of it, I'll have a Heineken. When they're at the gate, you can sense it. When they're in the home stretch, you can feel it. And when they cross the finish line, you know it. It's the winning feeling of thoroughbred racing from the Meadowlands, Monday through Saturday on Madison Square Garden Network. Six nights a week, the best horses compete at the country's premier racetrack, and you can catch all the win, place, and show action right at home. It's Racing from the Meadowlands here on Madison Square Garden Network.
St. John's wants to play in the fast lane this year. In order to do that, you've got to play the good D. There's the turnover going the other way. It's Mullins and Barry out in front. And there's Walter all alone. And he does bury it with authority. Going at the other end now, the versatility of Mullen. He rejects the shot, falls out of bounds, makes the save, a dangerous save under his basket. Weddington picks it up, throws the clothesline, Moses to the other end, and that looks familiar. Willie Glass putting it down in. Easy baskets for St. John's that came from the good D. And there's the turnover situation. Rutgers has already turned it over five times in five minutes. And a new player in the backcourt. That's Steve Brown out of Trenton, New Jersey, a sophomore. Mullen swipes the ball away. Mullen goes in, and he's going to be called for steps. Chris Mullen heard footsteps that time. Good pursuit coming back. As we indicated, Rutgers was vulnerable to pressure, and St. John's now is coming out after him. Tom Young countered by going with another small guard. Steve Brown in the backcourt which will help the ball handling, but it takes something away from him offensively. But what it does is it gives Battle the opportunity to play away from the ball instead of his jump shot. He Bell can now be the two guard, yes. Oh, nice follow by Steve Perry. And he has two field goals. It's 13-8 St. John's. Very important now. Rutgers just got to keep its cool. The St. John's team can explode and do it with such awesome talent. They can get you standing and watching. Wennington off a gorgeous feed from Mullen. 15-8, Redmond. Perry, Chris Remley. He can hit from there, but he's hitting the back iron. That's all. Willie Glass has it. He'll slow up. Off it goes to Moses. Since the opening moment, St. John's hasn't done much wrong. Boy, they're like a cobra. They're playing much more aggressively. Defensively, they're really anxious to get out and go. Maybe taking too many chances. Wennington working against Bell. Followed up and in by Walter Berry. He was in the air for three or four seconds, Bucky. Yeah, it should have been a violation. He went up and didn't come back down that's in three right. seconds. That's that's something, isn't it? That's a floating violation. Look at them dive. Bell. And it will not drop. Wennington has the rebound. Wennington to Moses. Moses backs it out. Lloyd Moore will check in at the next available whistle for, for the Scarlet Knights. With the two small guards, now Rutgers going zone. Willie Glass. Wennington slams it in. It's like a dunking exhibition. If the first one doesn't go, the second one does. And St. John's leads by 11. Well, with the second guard substitution, Lloyd Moore came out of the game, which makes Rutgers very small. And uh, that's begin to show on that offensive board. Foul called on Moses away from the ball. Bill Wellington, number 23, roaming the lane now without Lloyd Moore uncontested. Watch him follow on that offensive board. And he had to fight Walter Berry for it. Nice problem Luke Arneseca has. There's too many people playing above the rim. Now a little confusion as St. John's looks to substitute. Who's confused? That man? No, he's not confused. Sheldon Jones comes into the game, number 31, and also Mark Jackson. So Jackson replaces Moses. Shelton Jones replaces Willie Glass. Luke Karnaseka, 16 years at St. John's, 16 postseason tournaments. Battle penetrates, fires off balance, and hits. And John Battle is going to have to score a lot of points, Bucky. It's that simple if Rutgers is going to have a shot. Yeah, but you have to be careful when you jump out and play so super as St. John's has done early. Sometimes you kind of lay back and you lose that intensity. I've seen it happen a lot at the walk. Walter Berry oh. took a train to <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> That's, yeah, well, he's used to playing in Jamaica. That's where you change trains. No, that was solo. Yeah, he was, uh, that was Jam City. He couldn't wait to get there. So Steve Brown handles the ball out of the backcourt, averaging six points per game, a sophomore from a Coriston High School. Lloyd Very good Moore. high school player. Excuse me, Bruce. Lloyd Moore back in the game now, trying to give a little bulk underneath for Rutgers. Remley dumps it off for Perry through his hands, out of bounds. The maestro, Louis Carnesecca. He has the talent this year. 
but he told me it still will take time to mesh the talent. He said, not only do we have Walter, but we've got a lot of freshmen, a lot of new people. It's going to take time. Mullen with the blind pass over to Winnington, knocked away. And it's Rutgers ball. And I think St. John's has been a little bit too showy here, and it's hurt him a little bit. Well, this is the point I was making. When all of a sudden, uh, you know, you're having a highlight film in the first couple of minutes, you begin to think of, can you top this instead of the fundamentals that got you there? Battle. Pumps. Lloyd Moore tips it up no good. And the rebound, Shelton Jones. The freshman from Amityville, New York, and he is going to be a great basketball player. The first time I saw him was in the McDonald's Classic out in Pauley Pavilion in Los Angeles. I couldn't believe he was as smart a player at his size than just coming out of high school. He's going to be a good one. We have a foul on Walter Berry pushing off. Tom Young working the officials, and hopefully we'll get a break later on. It's a big game for Tom Young. It's Atlantic 10 versus Big East, and his team is seriously depleted with the injuries that you've already ticked off. Hopefully, uh, the academic ineligibilities and the injuries will be back ready uh, for the holiday festival. It's expected that they will be. Walter Berry with the steal, has Mullen on his left. Jackson trailing the play. Walter spins, and the rebound is pulled down by Steve Perry. Very reliable front court player. Brown whips it to Remley. Down low, Lloyd Moore puts it up and in. Very important for Rutgers to get a little confidence back. And they didn't do it pussyfoot, and they pushed the ball up the floor, and Lloyd Moore took the ball right up Walter Berry's nostrils for that deuce. And that should give him a little confidence. Lloyd if he Moore, tries it again, though, he may eat it. Lloyd Moore sat out last season after transferring from Marquette, but he did have a knee injury at the summer, and that hindered his development and his getting into shape this year. Mullen made the basket, but it will not count. Foul before. And one of the things that will hurt Tom Young is he can't let the big guy, Lloyd Moore, go too long because he has to come out after five minutes to get a blow. Chris Mullen posting up inside with Steve Perry. Perry, number 54, a great athlete. But you've got to have much more pressure on the ball because with Mullen posting up down there, unless there's great pressure on the ball, he's going to eat you alive. If not with the points, with the pass. Ron Rowan, number 12, is in for St. John's for the first time. Chris Mullen looks inside. Over it goes to Jackson. He hits the jumper. Mark Jackson is off to an excellent start. Leads the team in assists, averaging five points per game, shooting 75% from the floor. He spells Moses at the point. And he also spells Moses at really tracking uh, John Battle. They're going to try and wear him down between the two of them. Lloyd Moore threw it out of bounds. Nine turnovers for Rutgers. 8.58 left first half. St. John's 21. Rutgers 12. Now, as you look at that score, 8.50 to go and down nine. The way things have gone, the Rutgers seems to be fortunate to even be in the game. It just seems to be uh, a wipeout. Mullen missed, but Shelton Jones tipped it in. And it's an 11-point lead for the Redmen. Steve Brown twists, penetrates. Remley's open. Still looking for his first, and he hits it. Remley gets his first field goal, and he's another screw shooter. Yeah, and he's got to score at 6'9 uh, against a powerful front line like St. John's. He's not going to give you much on the boards, and he's really a big second guard. If he's not shooting well, he just can't help you. Mullen. Jackson, play catch. Here's Shelton Jones on the baseline. We have a blocking foul on Remley. Well, the oldest rule in basketball, cut, cut off that baseline. St. John's being criticized some this year for not being as patient as they have been offensively. But look at them go inside, trying to find somebody even more open. Back to the action. John Battle on a steal. Penetrates. Misses the layup. Rebound. Chris Mullen. And Rutgers can't afford to miss layups. One thing about it, though, they are not totally putting that game on ice. They, they're looking for their opportunities to fast break. Jackson penetrates. His shot is no good. He has his own rebound and backs it out. Wellington almost interfered with that shot. Not so sure he didn't touch it. Bill Wellington is so much more active this year. 
That experience playing for the Canadian Olympic team has really given him confidence. Of course, he had a serious injury, hit his head, went into convulsions, but fortunately, he's all right. Mullen puts it up. Foul called on Steve Brown. And Mullen will go to the free throw line for two. Chris Mullen, All-American, Olympian. Very close to becoming the all-time leading scorer in St. John's history. He's the most honored player in St. John's history. No one has accomplished more. Mullen misses a free throw. He is 9 for 11 now on the season. His lifetime shooting percentage, best in St. John's history, 86%. He moved that front foot, and he did it again before that ball ever got close to the rim. A little bit too confident that time, Christopher. So the Redmen of St. John's have things going their way. They leave the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. 24-14, 7-21 left, first half. Master, what's the secret of happiness? True happiness is to own nothing, have no possessions, be free of material belonging. A great one. The TV, the VCR, and the video camera. You don't own them? No, I rent them from Granada TV Rental. One low monthly payment covers all, even free repairs. And your tape, Inner Bliss My Way, that too can be rented? No, that you must buy. Experience the dream. The 1985 Buick Somerset Regal. The latest technological advancements. The ultimate in luxury, comfort, quality, and style. Add the equipment that takes it one step further, and you're there. The result? The Buick Somerset Regal. Equipped for real is only $97.74. When your Buick dealer gives you a price for real quality, believe it. Two Big East, MAC Conference doubleheaders in January. Seton Hall against Georgetown, St. Peter's in Manhattan on Tuesday, January 8th. And then Seton Hall and Villanova, LaSalle and Holy Cross, Saturday, January 19th at the Meadowlands Arena. Tickets are available by calling 201-935-3900. You can also catch the action on Madison Square Garden Network. Bucky, you were talking a moment ago about Bill Wennington. I spoke to him early in the week, out at a practice at St. John's, and he said, this is my last year, I've learned a lot. There are a lot of good memories here at St. John's, but I want to go out a winner, and this season means a heck of a lot. He is playing with intensity. Here's John Battle. Puts it up, no good. And the rebound to Ron Rowan, the transfer from Notre Dame, who sat out last year. He's a fine outside shooter. Redmen are really eight or nine deep with no problem. Winnington underneath with the basket. Oh, without pressure on the ball, that we're going to see that. There's only one way to deny that is to make that guy handle the ball, really struggle to get that pass off. Jackson with the steal, sends it up to Mullen, three on one. Here's Winnington again, and he slams it home again. Putting on a dunking exhibition, Bill Winnington has eight points. Tom Young wants a quick timeout, and St. John's leads by 14. You're watching college basketball from the Meadowlands. The New York Knicks, the New York Rangers, the New Jersey Devils. Three professional home teams planning to make 1984-85 a banner season on the Madison Square Garden Network. The Knicks have emerged as one of the NBA's top teams, and coach Hubie Brown is gearing up for a run at the championship. All-star forward Bernard King and the rest of the Knicks will give it all they've got to reach Basketball Summit. The Rangers have been a hometown favorite for 58 seasons, and their 59th shapes up as one of their best. Watch Captain Barry Beck and standout goalie Glenn Hamlin challenge the NHL and send Garden fans into a frenzy. And across the river, the New Jersey Devils are a team on the rise, trying to make their mark in the powerful Patrick division. All of the fast-paced action is right here on the Madison Square Garden Network. The Knicks, the Rangers, and the Devils. We bring legends to living room.
It's been all St. John's. They lead 28-14. The Red Men 12 for 21 from the floor. Rutgers 7 for 17. And Rutgers has committed 10 turnovers. St. John's 6. Tom Young exhorting his troops to be patient offensively. In those two scares at Jamaica where St. John's was able to get by just with one, there's an indication of the inside power of the Redmen. Both of those one-point games, their fast break was neutralized. That has not been the case here today. Rutgers has to be patient. John Battle leads the club in scoring. Last year, first team all metropolitan area, first team all Atlantic 10. Chris Remley from long range. More bangs. Battle has it underneath. He puts it up and in, and he had to throw it over some big bodies. That time, Rutgers worked patiently for the good shot. Remley had an outstanding shot. It didn't go, but they had good floor balance and got the offensive boards. Jackson, Ron Rowan. Rutgers in a sagging zone. Sagging 2-3. Mullen looks inside, has nothing. Team seems to respond well when Jackson's running the show up front. He's a better offensive player than Moses. Here's Rowan. He hits the outside jumper with Steve Perry in his face, and Perry picks up the foul. Perry, road scholar candidate, a tremendous competitor. But he's fighting bears with a switch out there today. I'll tell you who Rutgers misses. Eric Riggins, 6'8 sophomore, slender, but one of those uh, guys that plays well in a game like this. Talented offensively, a little bit erratic, but yeah, he's a big play player. There was no call. The basket counts. It's a 30-16 St. John's lead. Offensive foul was called on Shelton Jones away from the ball, so the hoop counts. Jones picks up the personal. Rutgers has the ball, and they're down 14. Riggins is out for the academic reasons. Expected to be back by the Michigan game later this month. Battle. Tied up by Jackson. Gets it off to Brown. Foul is called on Ron Rowan. Here's a look at Rowan, 6'5", junior from Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Played 13 games for Notre Dame a couple of years ago, only averaged three points per game, and elected to sit out last season and transfer to St. John's. Louis Carnesecca, I don't think he's happy with the coaching box or something. Walter Berry called for goaltending. It's all right. Makes him think twice about coming down in there. Barry's been sitting on the bench a little bit. He just want to let everybody know he was back. Hello. Boy, did you see how quickly St. John's was out and running with that thing? A marked difference. Wellington spins. He exudes confidence. Wellington with 12, 10 points in the game. St. John's 32, Rutgers 18. Good. Different he, Bill Wennington, isn't it? Oh, he's just uh, very confident. He wants the ball. He wants to shoot it. That may be the problem. Before it's all over, they've got a lot of guys that are very confident. It's, uh, we may have to find some complimentary players. Andre Bell off to Steve Brown. His pass intercepted by Walter Berry, and Perry pushes off. It's one and one time with 4.22 left in the first half. Baron Campbell coming in for Rutgers. 6'5", sophomore from Washington. Pretty good shooter. Tom Young trying to get some offense going. Mark Jackson, sophomore from St. Albans, New York, Bishop Lachlan High School. Done a fine job since he came in the game. Chris Mullen to Winnington. Here's Rowan. Redmond of St. John's, 3-0, ranked number three in UPI, ranked number three in AP. Walter Berry with those long strides. Like a gazelle, he hits the jumper, he has eight points. He really covers a lot of distance from where he catches the pass to where he releases it, which really makes it tough for the sagging defense. You go where the ball goes in, and when you get there, he's gone. And he's also up above you, a bunch. Battle, 25-footer, and he makes good. 10 for John Battle on five field goals. 
Look at the St. John's team. The point guard now is 6'4", Mark Action Jackson. Everybody else is bigger. You're looking at basically an NBA lineup. 6'5", 6'6", 6'9", 7 feet. Walter Berry pushing off. Remley was trying to front him. Berry went for the ball. There was no doubt about that one. And quickly, Shelton Jones checks in. And Berry will get a breather. There's that patience that Coach Karnaseka wants very much for the big guy. He's got to wait to let that game come to him a little bit. But when you're that talented and you've been playing in junior college and high school and dominating the games, you just have to let the game come to you. There's plenty of firepower on that St. John's team. Battle looks inside, has nothing. Jackson right up on him. Steve Perry. Rutgers is playing a perimeter game. They just can't work the ball underneath. Battle fires. Remley puts it up and in. Walter Berry on the bench. Two personal fouls for Berry. And it's now a 12-point game. 34-22, Redmen lead. 2.29 left first half. Rutgers trying to match up out of that 2-3, but they just can't stop the, the dump down oh, to the overpower. Like Mullen. an eel, like an eel. Mullen now with seven points. But this team is playing so well that sometimes you forget he's, he's even out there. Well, he's just, he's prowling the back of that zone along the baseline. He's got everybody turning their heads to try and find him. Remley, long range. Rebound, Bell puts it up. Still kept alive by Rutgers. Now Rowan, three on three. Mullen fills the lane. Mullen pulls. He hits. Off balance for some, but not for Chris Mullen. Well, I heard a couple of reports that, well, maybe St. John's is running a bit out of control, but never Chris Mullen. Always under control. Met the defense, pulled up, took it soft. Battle. He hits. Nothing but net for John. He has six field goals and 12 points. And if it wasn't for the shooting of John Battle, Rutgers would be way out of it. As it is, they trail by 14 with a minute 25 left first half. These two teams played in early January last year. Rutgers shot 26% the first half and 27 the second half. It was never a game. But they still lead this series 7-6. to six. And Tom Young leads Luke Karnaseka 7-6. to six. The series started in 1974. Jackson outside looking at the clock. A minute to go. Will St. John's hold for one? Or are they just looking for a good percentage shot, Bucky? I'm not sure. Uh, they're showing patience. You know, it's, when things are going your way, to pull it back out and probe a little bit. There's Chris asserting some leadership. Thanks for giving me an honest answer, though. <laughs> 40 seconds left, first half. Redmond by 14. Well, but that shows you something. You know, they've been running and gunning and uh, playing. Can you top this and looking good? They're going to go for one with Perry on the bench. Why put on, not? Put on I, the brakes and become a disciplined team that quickly is nice. Uh, yeah, but uh, you, you always wonder if you're taking your own momentum out of it. They were running so well. 15 seconds left, first half. Mullen. Out to Jackson. Rowan with six seconds. He fires. He hits. Two seconds left. And Mullen comes up with a steal. And that is it. So the first half is complete, and the Redmen of St. John's have a comfortable lead, 40 to 24. We'll come back with our halftime activities. Hit Jeff Rutgers, only four players scored in that first half. John Battle had 12, Chris Remley five. Four points for Steve Perry, and Lloyd Moore a field goal for two. And as far as team statistics are concerned, Bucky Waters, it was the Redmen of St. John shooting better from the floor and also committing less turnovers. Well, they were just awesome. A lot of their offense came from their defense. They were in the passing lanes. They were controlling the glass and, and running well. Uh, it, you know, it was just an awesome display. Uh, the, the numbers don't do justice to, uh, to what transpired in the first half. And the early part of this half is very important to Rutgers. They've got to come out and get a few buckets and get the tempo slowed down and get uh, get the Redmen out of that fast line. They uh, 
when they were running, they were just awesome. When the ball went up, it was almost like they just assumed Weddington was going to get the rebound. Everybody else was looking for a, a lane to go to the other end and put their favorite dunk on. Luke Karnaseka told me earlier this week, I haven't been disappointed with our team's effort, but I've been disappointed with the way we've meshed as a team. Today, he's getting a much better overall team game. There's more continuity in offense. And I would think the answer for Louie, as you see the halftime statistics again, it does take time to get people together. And this is the early month of the season. They're not into Big East Conference play yet. They've got a full month. Well, as frustrating as those two one-point victories were uh, at home against the Fordham and the Bonnies, winning that kind of a game is very important. It gives your team confidence. Blowing people away in early December uh, can give you delusions of grandeur. I'm sure that Luke Arneseca had a ten of ears at practice after both of those close wins. Second half, St. John's in the red, Rutgers in the white. St. John's with their starting lineup, Moses and Mullen, Willie Glass, Bill Wennington, and Walter Berry in the front court. Berry spins it back outside to Moses. Here's Mullen. And the rebound taken down by Remley. Off it goes to John Battle. Rutgers starts with Battle and Remley in the backcourt. Perry, Andre Bell, and Big Lloyd Moore in the middle. Back with a one-guard front is Rutgers. Remley just a little uncertain out there at the head of the key. Off it goes to Andre Bell. John Battle. Remley. And he's got to start hitting if Rutgers is going to have a shot. That was superb, though. They controlled the ball. Maybe 15, 20 seconds. He's got a very good shot. And I'll tell you what that does to St. John's. They're so anxious to get out there and, and maintain the dunking parade. It gets them a little over-anxious. Then they begin to press at the other end of the floor. Willie Glass penetrates and lays it in for two. Four points for the sophomore from Atlantic City, New Jersey. Oh, he went a long way without resistance. No weak side help there for Rutgers. Perry out to Lloyd Moore. Remley. Moses back, pounding John Battle. And when Moses tires, Jackson comes in. Battle outside. St. John's is only one of, I would think, two teams in the Big East that play some man nowadays, Syracuse being the other team. Everybody else is really zoned. Well, La Jolla's can come at you man for man. Bell hits the jumper. And Rutgers has hit two straight here in the second half. 42-28, St. John's by 14. Just underway, second half of play. Rutgers trying to match up out of that 2-3. Immediately, Chris Mullen goes down to the baseline. The St. John's team last year was 18-12 and, and only 8-8 eight and eight in the Big East. But 17 of their last 20 games, they lost by five points or less. Well, if he starts to be a constant threat from the top of the key, Moses, they are really going to be awesome. Remley outside to battle. And we have a whistle and a foul on Chris Mullen. And the crowd roars because there was some talk, Tom Young, in the papers earlier this week about the fact that do we protect are all Americans, much like we do our NBA superstar. Well, he was much more pointed than that, but he said that he was, uh, in fact, getting preferential treatment. And there was a controversial play at the end of the Fordham game where uh, Mullen went to the free throw line and it was thought by many who saw the game that perhaps that was unfair. He made a one-on-one -on -one to win the game. Yes, he did. Steve Perry. Outside to John Battle. Boy. Got to be a little frustrating for Battle. Long jumper. It's like a launching pad. Yes, but they're doing it. They're doing what they have to do. Controlling the ball, keeping St. John's on defense for many seconds, and then getting a good shot. Really glass with the ball. Rutgers has hit their first three field goals from the floor in the second half. Moses backs it out. Moses practiced this summer in the City College League, trying to improve in all aspects of his game. Really glass, still suspect if he can hit that weak side jumper, but if he can, it'll make this team that much tougher. Here's Wennington. Barry. 
foul call. Traveling on Walter Berry, no foul. <laughs> I tell you what, it was uh, it was a bit of contact in there. Wennington went for the basket and he tore our arms to get there. And we have an official timeout with 16 minutes and two seconds left. In the second half, the Redmen of St. John's lead 44 to 30. But Rutgers has come out to play in the second half. They've hit their first three from the field and we'll be right back. We're Manufacturers Hanover, helping you grow wherever you are. A family buys a new motor home in Denver. Our CIT people did the financing. A tool and die firm selects our treasury management system in St. Louis. Our bank's financial management system subsidiary developed it. A homeowner buys a lawnmower in Portland. That's our MasterCard he's using. We're Manufacturers Hanover. And now you know why. We're called a financial source worldwide. The car won't start. Winter driving can mean trouble, but plain gas line antifreeze often can't help. STP gas treatment does more. It tunes up your gas for better performance. Used regularly, STP helps break up water in your tank to remove it. Helps clear your fuel line and cleans your carburetor. Satisfaction guaranteed. Oh, Daddy, it's coming! Don't get stopped cold. Get STP gas treatment and tune up your gas. STP! Your car care company. Luke Arnaseca, the winningest coach in St. John's history. Last year, he passed the legendary Joe Lapchick. Ranks among the nation's top 10 coaches in winning percentage. And he's been to postseason play in every one of his seasons at St. John's. This is his 17th year. His record, 343 and 127. 11 NCAAs, 5 NITs. He uh, doesn't begin to plan his vacation until much later in the spring. That's for sure. <laughs> Might be the most talented team he's had. Yep. Lloyd Moore, fall away jumper, and he hits it. I would have to agree with that, and I've either played against or seen all of the teams he's had since he's been back at St. John's. No question, the potential is here. This is his final four year. With all the success, he has not made that plateau, and this team certainly can do it, but it's a long time between now and April 1st. 12 point game. Winnington fall away. Oh. Yes, it drops. A friendly rim for oh. William Winnington. And the foul is on Lloyd Moore. And let's see if Moore comes out of the game. Nope. It will be Andre Bell that comes out. Campbell in the game. How strong is Bill Weddington? Watch this now. He gets hammered. I mean, he gets hammered by a guy 260, and he's still strong enough to get that ball up soft on the rim. Yeah, he got a lucky bounce. Most people couldn't have gotten it over three feet. Three-point play, and St. John's has a 15-point lead again with 15-20 to play, 47-32. to 32. The Redmen now in a 1-3-1 one, one, trapping defense, trying to get Rutgers out of that patient attack. A good move by Lou Karnaseka. Tom Young had his team well prepared at the half to methodically move that ball against the St. John's man-for-man -man defense. So they're getting another look, and it's hard to hold the ball against this 1-3-1 one, one trap. Willie Glass ticketed with the foul. Rembley penetrates, dumps it off to Bell. Lloyd Moore, he's got it, and he'll go to the line for a chance for a three-point play. Against the 1-3-1, one, one. Remley now watch him split the double team. Fakes up, goes down underneath. Of course, the error there was Willie Glass flying at him. Another nice pass in here by Perry, and the big fella goes up. Look at those thighs. They could go condo, I'm telling you. I wouldn't draw the charge on him. Got to tell you what Tom Young told me earlier in the week. Told me he was out of shape. He said, followed up by saying, but he never misses a meal. <laughs> Well, there's no question. He was a heralded high school player, went to Marquette. They changed coaches. He was unhappy, and uh, he could be the difference in a good or a very good year for Tom Young's club. Michael Moses hits from downtown. Remley at the other end of the floor. He hits the jumper. St. John's 49, Rutgers 36. But there's no defensive intensity now. Uh, on either side. John. No, just... Uh, a little bit of schoolyard here, and the pressure's on Carneseca to get that fire back in his club. But they're a great club. They've got that killer instinct. Barry. He floated. 
Walter Berry with 10 points. St. John's back by 15. Battle. Run and gun game right now. Little to no defense. Mullen. His pass broken up by Perry. Remley with two on one. Has Battle on his right. Battle spins. Turns. Rebound Willie Glass. Back and forth we go. Tempo quickens. This is definitely not in the Rutgers advantage right now. Moses. Glass. A little shy. Number 30 for St. John's. That's that weak side I was talking about earlier. And he's a little shy. Put that ball up. Wennington, he's not shy. Oh. Rebound Remley. Squared up well. Good looking stroke. Didn't go, but he's going to be a force in there. Battle threw it right to Walter Berry. Three on one. Glass and Berry fill. Berry is fouled by Chris Remley as he made the move to the basket. That's about a nine point dive. Rutgers coming unglued here a little bit. Tom Young now going with uh, Steve Brown in the game. Steve battle. Brown replaces Battle. He'll get a little bit of a breather. Yeah, we talked about the uh, the combination of uh, Jackson and Moses alternating to just make every possession for Battle an adventure. It's begun to wear him down. When you see that kind of a, a play, you know it's fatigue. He's too good a player. Mullen steps in and pops and hits. What a stroke. 17 point lead for St. John's. Perry. Rebound Mullen. Here come the Red Men. Four on three. Mullen loses the ball. And we've got a foul or backcourt or a push off on Chris Mullen. I choose the third of the three. All right. Yeah, that should satisfy the critics about preferential treatment. How many times have you seen that? Look at that for consistency. 70 straight games. And, and he doesn't care if he scores 25, 30, or 12, as long as his team wins, as long as he's got the flow and he's doing other things. Here's Moses. Loses the ball. Regains it. And a foul on Steve Perry. Now, if you're Tom Young, you certainly can't get upset with Steve Perry for that play. It just kind of typifies the day that Rutgers has had. Now we've got a timeout with 12.36 left. In the second half, St. John's leads by 17. And it's been a balanced St. John's attack today. Walter Berry scoring, Bill Wennington, Mike Moses hitting from the outside, and of course, Chris Mullen. We'll be back. After playing against some pretty tall competition, you probably think I shower with the deodorant soap. Not anymore, because I made a break from deodorant soaps. A clean break with Ivory. Look inside. Ivory's a basic natural soap. Not like soaps that leave deodorants or heavy perfumes all over you. With Ivory, I feel clean, I smell clean. And that's an honest clean. Make a clean break with Ivory. No soap can get you cleaner, no matter what size the competition. Your eyes are about to deceive you. Here comes Fujifilm with color pictures so true to life, it's a real breakthrough. Fuji HR 1600 film. Fuji's advanced technology has developed the fastest, most light-sensitive color print film in the world. For sharp pictures with true color, under more conditions than any other film made. Get extraordinary Fuji films and get the true picture. Fuji 35mm disc and 110 statistic reflects his shooting abilities but I was talking to him the other day Bucky and I had, to, I had to tell you this story I'm in the hallway at Alumni Hall he's getting ready to go home for dinner and then come back and shoot from 10 o'clock to 11.45 at night or so and I kept asking him questions and he kept giggling and he had this smile on his face and his eyes were all gleaming and I said to him uh, can I ask you a question a personal question he goes sure I said are you in love with that kind of look in his face he goes no no I'm just I'm just hanging out and it just typifies his personality he's just a happy kid always enjoying what he's doing he, and uh he's just unbelievable a couple of more reports like that we're going to call you dear abby bruce 
I thought that Curry Kirkpatrick in the Sports Illustrated uh, really captured the fact that Chris Mullen really is a junkie. I mean, he just lives basketball and uh, every free moment is in the gym. However, I don't think that, uh, uh, according to that article, uh, talking to Chris Mullen is like talking to Damon Runyon either. But uh, he did capture the dedication to the game. He's special. Berry shot, missed. Berry has it again. Oh. He's got such body control, Walter Berry. He has 12 points. And the Red Men have a comfortable lead. There's been no doubt about this one from the beginning. St. John's 55, Rutgers 36. St. John's came flying out of the gate in the first half. And they've kept the momentum. Steve Perry hits. Rutgers shooting much better in the second half. Yeah, but it really doesn't matter. St. John's can beat you a number of ways. It's interesting to see how efficient they'll be without Mullen. Running team. Well, what like he's enjoying himself more this year. Well, you know, that's a point to be made there for the summers now with foreign travel and uh, players get a chance to improve so much between the seasons. Battle shot pulled down by Walter Berry. Handles the ball pretty good for somebody 6'8". He has a James Worthy body, and that's a mouthful. But he can run, jump, handle. An extraordinary specimen. Moses. Rebound to Moses. Alert play by Michael Moses, senior from Tolentine. He's been around. Playmaker the past couple of years. Spent some time with Norm Sloan down at Florida. Transferred back home. Barry gets the roll. Effortlessly. 59-38. 21-point lead for St. John's. Looking for their fourth win of the season. Red men have never been ranked this high this early in the season. Third in both the major polls. Perry. Locked around, controlled by Wennington. Four on two, Moses elects to bring it out. That's smart, that's smart. Early in the game, St. John's forced some of those. And with this kind of a lead, the temptation to get down there and make a big play, I'm sure is, uh, is great. St. John's very effective here. Not missing Mullen at this point. Wennington, back outside. Patience in the half-court attack. You can't always get it out and go. Wennington pushing off underneath. Andre Bell was there with Wennington and back in the game, Lloyd Moore. This Rutgers, Rutgers team definitely is going to take on a different tone with Ellerby in the backcourt. He's out with a shoulder industry, uh, in injury and Zucker, who I thought was a very fine freshman last year. Yeah, well, there's a man that's uh, under control. It's a nice Sunday afternoon. We're talking a 21-point lead. He's got the franchise on the bench. Big decision. Do I put him back in or don't I? Yeah, I'll put him back in. Here comes Chris Mullen. Lloyd Moore ends up in the first row. That could be a little No, dangerous. no, that's not possible, Bruce. He's in the first row, the <laughs> second row, and the third row. <laughs> okay. The, the, man, the man needs a box. Mullen's back in the game. Chris Mullen with 11 points today. He needs 26, so he needs 15 more to break the all-time St. John's scoring record set by Bob Zawalek. Zeke Zawalek. Foul call is wanting to try to make the move. In Moore's, uh, it should be said for him that uh, even though he's playing himself back into shape, that he has not been intimidated by the front line of St. John's. He's in there battling, and he uh, certainly hasn't been awed by anybody. He's just not ready to play at this level yet. St. John's will be a part of the ECAC Holiday Festival this year. Steve Brown back in for Rutgers. They'll be also taking on Davidson next Wednesday, then Saturday, December 15th at Niagara, then UCLA at Madison Square Garden Saturday, December 22nd. Then it's the Holiday Festival, then it's a Big East play January 2nd at UConn. That UCLA game commemorating 50 years of college basketball in Madison Square Garden. Steve Brown runs the attack for the Scarlet Knights. 
John Battle fires, but before the shot, we had a blocking foul on the Redmen. Now remember last year, Rutgers was 7 and 11 at one point of the season, and then late in the year, Tom, Tom Young gelled this team. They won eight of their last nine, finished 15 and 13, and were a highly respectable club late in the year, which gave him inspiration for this season. Then he lost his three players early on, and it's been trying to patch up the problem. Uh, th for the, for the reason of the three key players being out, plus catching St. John's right now after two frustrating games, Tom Young, <laughs> he's, he's letting the frustration out. Some kind of upset. It's been a long day for him. It was going to be uphill, but his team uh, just hasn't played well. But he still leads this series, or at least he did going into today. He leads Luke Corner second, seven to six in this Rutgers St. John series, but it's going to take an earthquake for it not to be 7-7 seven, seven at the end of today. Mark Jackson at the line. He has two points on the day. Leads the team in assists. Last year on the Big East all-rookie team. Perfect second man coming off the bench at the point, or he can start for you, too. Probably doesn't put as good a pressure on as Moses, but a mark different offensively for St. John's when he's in there. Does more things. Gets more assists. Yep. Creates more. He's bigger. 61-38. St. John's by 23. Brown off to Steve Perry. Here's Battle. Has the ball deflected. Mullen has the rebound. And this time he hands off to Jackson. And Jackson slowly waltzes across the timeline. John Battle only one for five in the second half. Mullen penetrates, dishes to Winnington. Rebound to Perry. Rutgers with a fast break. Battle. Campbell. And Campbell hits his first field goal. Darren Campbell, sophomore, McKinley High School, Washington, D.C. 61-40 ball game. Campbell played 18 games last year. He's got pretty good shooting range. Comes off the bench and gives the club a little bit of a lift. Here's a player I really like coming back in for St. John. Shelton Jones. He's like a, a Magic Johnson type figure. He's big, but he can handle it. He's 6'7". He can make a lot of things happen. And before he's done, he's going to be a heck of a college basketball player. 7.55 left in the game. It's all St. John's. It's a busy world we live in, it can take your breath away. When the going isn't easy, there's an easy going way. So relax and catch the feeling, take off and get away. You're gonna like us, gonna like us, T-W-A. Take your time through the airport by reserving your seat in advance. Take a comfortable wide body plane. Spread out in a spacious business class or stretch out in a first class sleeper seat. Across the country, across the world, nobody is working harder to make flying easier than everybody at TWA. We're a spirit you can count on, a hand across the miles. We're a class that you can count on, This program is authorized by Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated solely for the entertainment of our audience and any publication, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this event, including the imposition of a charge for viewing the program without the express written consent that Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated is prohibited. And the announcers on this telecast were selected by Madison Square Garden Productions Incorporated. St. John 61, Rutgers 40. A little under eight minutes to play. Shelton Jones, number 31, into the lineup for St. John's. Steve Perry, the steal. Ahead it goes to John Battle. He penetrates and misses the slam. He should have passed the ball. He kept it and missed the dunk. It's been that kind of day for Rutgers. 
Jackson. Chris Mullen, beautiful oh. feed to Jones. I'm telling you what, Bruce Beck. Chris Mullen is the Bill Bradley of the 80s. He's going to do for this team what Bradley did for Princeton, only Mullen's got some real talent to work with. His I mean, average may not be as high this year. Well, he just, he passes, he brings it up against the press, he goes to the board, he posts up. There is nothing Chris Mullen can't do, except maybe he's not a great jumper, and he certainly isn't blessed with great speed, but then neither was Bill Bradley or Oscar Robertson or any other great basketball player that I can think of. Usually the guys with the blazing speed get in more trouble. The really great players all had a, a little quickness, but they had great control. Ron Stewart in the game for the first time, and John Battle goes to the free throw line. Louis was upset with Mullen earlier this year in, uh, in one of the games. He took only two shots in the first half. He yelled at him, said, stop being Santa Claus. <laughs> now, if you could interpret that, that smart remark, I'd appreciate it. Well, if this team is, is going to be a great team, they certainly have to build balance. And Mullen is doing more than his share at finding the open man. Gives everybody a piece of the rock. Jackson looks inside. Shelton Jones. Look at that move. Uh, yes, and a foul. The Amityville Horror. This young man averaged 25 points and 14 rebounds a game last year in high school. He's precocious for a freshman. He just knows how to play. What a move. And then watch this. <laughs> yeah. Hey, they say this is going to be tough in the big time. I'm having a ball. High jump, 6-7 in high school. The Redmen are loaded. Shelton Jones with seven points in the game, and St. John's leads by 25, 66-41. Turnover against the Scarlet Knights. 14th of the game. Both clubs have 14 turnovers. I'm really anxious to see this Rutgers team in the Holiday Festival. I think we're going to see uh, a good basketball team come into the Garden at the end of this month. This has been a long, difficult day for them. They just played the Red Men on the wrong day. Ron Rowan backdoor feed to Jackson. Oh, beautiful blindside pass. Oh. Mullen lays it in, and St. John's is working the ball to perfection. They really are. It's obvious that in the last timeout, there's a shot. What's passing the ball now, when you've got this kind of a game and everybody starts thinking about their stats, St. John's continues to work for the open shot. Superb passing. Mark Action Jackson, number 13, got it all going, saving that ball off the baseline. Mullen Biggie's player of the year as a sophomore, shared the award with Patrick Ewing last year, and a rare miss for Mullen. That's Two misses on the afternoon for Chris Mullen, one for three. One and one time. Tom Young in his 12th year at Rutgers, 225 and 102. He's had winning seasons in 10 of his first 11 there. This is his 25th year of coaching college basketball, Bucky. And he still looks young, and I bet you he's chewed up enough towels to... <laughs> to keep a Turkish bath in business for a year. I bet somewhere in his career, they're go he's gonna have to have some abdominal surgery. They're gonna get all that lint out of there. And it'll probably go down to 160 pounds. Tarkanian's another one, gnawing on that towel, like Linus. Notice anyone new on that bench this year? Next to Tom Young, coaching-wise? Fellow by the name of Eddie Jordan. Ah, so. Shelton Jones lays it up and in. Eddie Jordan, a pretty good basketball player at Rutgers. Played a while in the NBA, now back as one of Tom's assistant coaches. Phil Sellers this year, not back with the team as a coach. Here's John Battle. And Battle has been very quiet in the second half. They've shut him down. He's only made one for five. One for six. Harry Robinson keeping our statistics at courtside and doing an impeccable job. And Brad Fuss in our remote truck doing a fine job as well. Second personal foul on Jackson. 
And Battle finds his way to the free throw line. The effective platooning of Moses and Jackson has taken its toll. John Battle's a fine offensive guard. And with Ellerby in the lineup running next to him at the point guard, he's even better. Battle's career high, 35 points, did it against Massachusetts, scored 30 or more five times last year. But he hasn't had good success against St. John's. Last year they totally shut him down, and today they've done the same in the second half. Ron Rowan is going to help this team, transfer out of Notre Dame. Good outside shooter. And he'll help against player. zones quite a bit. There'll be times when St. John's needs Moses and Jackson in the game at the same time against good pressure defenses like the Hoyas. Steve Perry, pretty move. Ten points for the senior from Woodbridge, Virginia. He's a player. The Redmen would be difficult to press if they went with Moses and Jackson in the backcourt and moved Mullen to forward. You know, you look at these two teams, Bucky, and both teams have a distinct flavor as far as the area they've been recruited from. Tom Young prefers the Washington, D.C. area, does most of his recruiting there. Luke Konaseka sticks mostly to New York. Do you feel that there's really one area of the country today that is by far and away the best? No, not really. Uh, you talk to the people in California, and they'll tell you the best basketball is played in the L.A. area. They're just good players everywhere, and the, the proliferation of television uh, and college basketball has helped that. It used to be that uh, if you lived in the big cities, you got to see the great players. Now even the kids on the farm see the great ones, and they emulate. And there's talent everywhere, and they're just bigger and stronger, and they run faster, and they jump higher. I don't know where it's going to stop, but it's fun to watch. 72-47, battle shot is good. Battle trying to come alive. 23 points, St. John's lead, 4.40 to play. Bruce Beck and Bucky Waters from the Meadowlands Arena. You're looking at the Redmen of St. John's who are number three in the nation. And they'll be tested pretty quickly this year. Gonna have to play DePaul later on at Alumni Hall. Brown shot, rejected by Mullen. And who said the kid couldn't jump, but goaltending is called. Well, it's interesting. 21-point lead in under five minutes, and Mullen is out there with uh, four reserves. Well, Glass is still on the floor. Mullen, double team, throws it off to Moses. Wouldn't it be it? Excuse me, Bruce. Karnasek is not happy. You saw him quiet for a while, and it doesn't take him much. Well, to get a little fiery. Well, it's a, this is this is good teaching time with this kind of a lead. He doesn't want it to get hairy. Redmen lead by 21 points, 4:08 left to play. We'll be back. Valley's Casino Hotel in Atlantic City is taking these few moments to wish you the best of luck. Although, to be frank. To have a good time at Bally's, you don't really need it. Bally's, Park Place, Casino Hotel. Bally's, where a great time is a sure thing. Taxi! Over 19 million times a year, people take off with us to cities all across America. Maybe it's because we can take them to more places than America, TWA, United, and Delta combined. What? Or maybe they just like taking off without leaving the ground. Take Amtrak now and take advantage of our All Aboard America fares. Today, and don't forget the ECAC Holiday Festival coming up in Madison Square Garden, December 27th. Doubleheader, St. John's Old Dominion, Game 1. North Carolina State, Jim Valvano's team, very tough this year on Rutgers in the nightcap. And then the championship doubleheader beginning at 12.30 p.m. on Saturday, December 29th. The ECAC Holiday Festival should be something else this year. Steve Brown for Rutgers, blazes in and misses the layup. Boy, I bet that clock ain't go fast enough for Tom Young. We're talking nothing's right. I thought Mullen would come out of the game. He's still in there. 
Wouldn't it be a travesty if he turned an ankle now, huh? Brown leads battle, and battle lays it up and in. And that one almost came out. It hit about three or four sides of the rim and finally dropped. John Battle has come back strong in the second half. He has 21 points, two below his average. He's going to have a big season in, term of, in terms of numbers this year, that's for sure. Shelton Jones, nice feed to Stewart. Stewart is hacked. He'll shoot two. Battle grabbed him. Shelton Jones, so very quick, nifty feet, takes the ball with him. Randolph in the game for Rutgers. Sam Randolph, senior from Trenton, New Jersey. And also in the game for the Redmen of St. John's is Terry Bross, a freshman from Immaculata High School in Somerville, New Jersey. Randolph's uh, been bothered by a hamstring. Actually, uh, Tom Young uh, would have been much better suited talent-wise to uh, run a couple of uh, programs on the MASH series with his medical problems. Here's a player you have to like, Ron Stewart at the free throw line. He, he played a lot last year, played a lot the year before, but now he's a senior. Because of the talent, his role is going to be limited this year, and I think he's adapting to it well. His attitude's positive, goes out there and gives it his all, and it can't be easy to see your minutes decrease as you get older. Yeah, that's uh, it's a very good point, Bruce, but it's the key to the good chemistry on the ball club. The key is that 9, 10, 11, and 12 man, do they give you good practices? Are they a positive influence? Or are they always walking around pouting? Because it has its effect on the ball club. Rutgers still hustling. That has to please Tom Young. Here's Battle. Less than three minutes left in the ball game. St. John's commanding 20-point lead, 73-53. They have led from the very outset. Andre Bell has his second field goal of the game. It's an 18-point lead, but... This one hasn't been in doubt for a while, the outcome, that's for sure. One of the things we haven't seen by St. John's today is when, if for any reason Weddington is foul trouble or hurt, whatever, they always have the option of putting Waterbury in that center spot. So they've got depth at all positions. The problem now is trying to weld it into a solid unit and make everyone comfortable in their roles, whether Mullins in the front court, the back court, whether they're playing two small guards or one, and that takes time, but the talent is there. Darren Campbell, Steve Brown in the game for Rutgers. John Battle remains in there. We've told, talked a lot about the rivalry over the years. I remember the, and I've seen a lot of these games, Bucky, the best game I've ever seen between these two teams. ECAC postseason tournament, Madison Square Garden. Phil Sellers of Rutgers hitting three consecutive hoops down the stretch against Beaver Smith. In a great one-on-one -on -one confrontation, Rutgers pulling away with the win, 70 to 67, and that was the Rutgers team that went to the Final Four in 75-76. 31 in a row. Yep. Fellow named Marv Albert uh, and I did that game, Bruce. You were just a little fella, and uh, Marv has moved on to to uh, to do well in this business. He just doesn't do enough events. <laughs> That's all for John Battle. Five personal fouls. You. He is out of the game. First, he goes over and shakes the hand of Luke Karnasek, and Louie gives him five instead of shaking his hand. 21 points for John Battle, and he earned them. He was dogged by Moses, by Jackson all day long. He made a few mistakes, some errors in judgment. But the but effort's he, there, isn't oh it? Oh, yeah, they just wore him down, and it was a long day for him, too. Again, with LRB running beside him to take care of the ball, he's going to have much easier nights. Chris Mullen leaves the game in favor of Bob Antonelli. Antonelli, a seldom used senior from Nanticoke, Pennsylvania. Willie Glass to the free throw line. A nervous free throw. Used it all. 
Holy Glass is a ball player that was really highly recruited, and a lot of people expected big statistical numbers from him. He just hasn't given the team that. But he's one of the five starters, and he contributes, and he jumps well, and he's fast, yeah. and he'll, he'll be a part of this team. Well, you can't have all stars in a good ball club, right? But those complementary players need to be good athletes. More importantly, understand their role and have a good attitude about it. Rod Stewart, backdoor pass, a beautiful feed. Antonelli puts it up. Rebound Rutgers, and they come off and running. Steve Brown. Randolph. Sam Randolph hits a 20-footer for her, his first basket of the game. And it's 75-59, a 16-point lead. Steve Brown called for the reach. Bucky Waters, here's your quiz question of the day. St. John's is third on the all-time list in terms of total team wins. What two schools are ahead of them? Kentucky. Right. And North Carolina. And for your bonus quiz. <laughs> Nicely done. Thank you. That's a lot, that's a lot better than those, those lonely heart stories. Percent. That's a lonely heart. <laughs> Lou, Louis shaking a couple of hands, and Brian Mahoney, his assistant coach, Ronnie Rutledge, and of course, Al Labalbo. Well, after the last two adventures he's had with one-point wins at home, I'm sure it's kind of nice to relax and watch those seconds tick off. He's had to work right to the buzzer the last two times out. Steve Sharina hit a couple of free throws. Sharina, another freshman. He's out of St. Francis Prep. Led the Terriers of St. Francis Prep last year to the Catholic High School Association semifinals, and he's another one of Louis' recruiting class that has performed well. Steve Perry puts it up and in. He gives good pull effort to the final second. Well, this is nice. The score is going to be respectable, even though this issue never really was in doubt. So the Redmond of St. John's will approve to 4 and 0. Oh. This is the first time they flexed their muscle, though. It's beginning to come. Seven seconds left in the game. Antonelli backs it out. Four seconds to go. They want to shoot it. And the game ends. St. John's never in doubt. Improved to 4-0. Luke Karnaseka has to be happy with this one. He told me earlier in the week, never have we had such potential. But it takes time. You've got to mold the talent. And we just haven't played well. I, I think he has to say he played well today. Very definitely, uh, Rutgers couldn't do the things that they really wanted to do without uh, two experienced guards trying to control the tempo, uh, trying to hold off the pressure defense. And St. John's was very aggressive defensively at the early part of the game, forcing Tom Young to go to two smaller guards. But neither one was Ellerby, and that's what they really needed to have the continuity. Final score, St. John 77, Rutgers 61.